In this video, I want to talk about some examples of splitting fields. So let's start with a really easy example where we take a quadratic polynomial like x squared minus 2 in q bracket x. We know what the roots of this look like in R or in C. It's just the positive square root of 2, the real number that is positive that squares to 2, and it's negative. And if you consider the field q adjoin this positive square root of 2, it's clear that because it contains square root of 2 and is a field, negative 1 times the square root of 2 is also in this field. So this field contains both of the roots of f of x. And q itself doesn't contain those roots. Like x squared minus 2 is irreducible in q bracket x. So q adjoins square root of 2 is a field over which this polynomial splits completely into a product of linear factors. And there's no proper subfield of this field over which this polynomial splits into a product of linear factors. So it is a splitting field for f of x. All right, let's look at another example. Let's say x squared minus 2 times x squared minus 3. This is in q bracket x. We know what the roots look like. It's plus or minus square root of 2 and plus or minus square root of 3. And the field generated by square root of 2 and square root of 3 over q contains all four of these roots. There's no proper subfield of this field that also contains all four of these roots. By definition of uh, the field generated by square root of 2 and square root of 3, we already know that um, q adjoined square root of 2 really is a proper subfield of this field, and q adjoined square root of 3 really is a proper subfield of this field. We proved very carefully that uh, square root of 3 was not in the field generated by square root of 2 over q. So, okay, what does that mean? This field, this, uh, this field generated by these two elements is a splitting field for f of x. And what do we know? f of x is a polynomial of degree 4. We know that the splitting field has degree at most 4 factorial. But in this example, the splitting field has degree 4, which is much less than 4 factorial, which is 24. So this is just a good opportunity to point out that uh, it's not always true that the splitting field has degree n factorial. And in particular, because this polynomial is not irreducible, because it factors over q in q bracket x, the splitting field has much lower degree. All right, so let's next talk about the example of x cubed minus 2, irreducible polynomial in q bracket x. We know what the roots are in C. It's the cube root of 2 the positive real number that you cube and get 2. And then the cube root of 2 times a primitive third root of unity in C, e to the 2 pi i over 3. And then the cube root of 2 times e to the 2 pi i over 3 squared, which is another primitive third root of unity. So just to recall, if we look at the unit circle in the complex plane, e to the 2 pi i over 3 means just go an angle of uh, 2 pi i over 3 of the way around. So one third of the way around. For 4 pi i over 3, 2 pi i over 3 squared, you're going twice this angle. And you can see that if you multiply, I mean, e to the i theta 1 times e to the i theta 2 is e to the i theta 1 plus theta 2. So if you multiply this complex number by itself three times, you get back to 1. So this number cubed is 1. Uh, what is it as a complex number of the form a plus bi? Remember this trigonometry fact from when you first learned trigonometry that e to the i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta. And uh, 2 pi over 3 is one of those angles where we know the value of sine and cosine. And so we can rewrite uh, these three roots in C as cube root of 2, cube root of 2 times minus 1 plus the square root of minus 3 over 2 and cube root of 2 times the square of this, which you can check, is minus 1 minus the square root of minus 3 over 2. We can call these theta 1, theta 2, and theta 3. These are the three roots in C of this polynomial x cubed minus 2. So how do we find a splitting field? Well, if you look at the field generated by cube root of 2 over q, you can ask, does this already have the other two roots in it? And the answer is clearly no. 
because cube root of two is a real number. If you take the field generated by a real number over Q, that field that you get is a subfield of R. So theta two and theta three are not in R. Like these are complex numbers that really are not real numbers. So it's very clear that these two other roots are not in this field. So, okay, just for concreteness, what do the elements of this field look like? Remember it's A plus B times the cube root of two plus C times the cube root of two squared, where A, B, and C are rational numbers. So this is not already a splitting field. So what happens if you adjoin another one of these roots? So if you take, for example, the field generated over Q by the cube root of two, and then also the second root, the cube root of two times e to the two pi i over three, any field that contains both of these elements also contains their quotients, which is e to the two pi i over three. And if you contain e to the two pi i over three, then you also contain e to the two pi i over three squared, this e to the four pi i over three. And if you contain the cube root of two and e to the two pi i over three squared, then it's clear that you contain this third root as well. So this field contains all three of the roots. So I'll pause and erase and talk a little bit more about this example. We have this field extension, the field generated by the cube root of two and the cube root of two times e to the two pi i over three over q. Uh, and we see that that contains all three roots of f of x in c. But we want to give a nicer description of this field. e to the two pi i over three is minus one plus the square root of negative three over two. So if you have an extension of q and it contains this element, then you can multiply by two, you can add one, and it also contains the square root of negative three. And if you have an extension that includes this positive real cube root of two and it contains square root of negative three, then, okay, it contains e to the two pi over three. And you can see that it contains all three of these roots. So what are we seeing? We're seeing that the field generated by these two elements, cube root of two and square root of negative three over Q is a splitting field for f of x, that it contains all of the roots and no proper subfield of it contains all of these roots of f of x. So uh, we can draw this diagram that represents this field and then its subfields. We have q adjoined square root of negative three. This has degree two over q. We have q adjoined this theta one, the cube root of two, which has degree three. Each q adjoined each one of the other roots these three fields are all different fields. They're all extensions of Q of degree three. And what we're taking here at the top is the composite of these two fields. So, uh, you know, the GCD of two and three is one. We see that this extension has degree six. Uh, so you can say quite a bit about the minimal polynomials of, uh, you know, like an element like the cube root of two over Q adjoined the square root of negative three. So uh, this is a case where this polynomial has the three different roots in C, which give three different degree three extensions of the field Q. We know from our earlier discussion of fields that each of these three fields these are isomorphic to each other as fields. Like we can write down an isomorphism between uh, each one of these. So uh, even though one of these fields is a subfield of R and the other two are not, these three fields are algebraically indistinguishable. So this is a really good example uh, to keep in mind. This is something that we'll come back to when we start to talk about Galois theory.